back this yeah. way. Ooh. I think you said that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. We'll, uh, we'll pray for these. Father God, we come to you ask you to be with all those who need our prayers. We come to you ask a special prayer on those that was mentioned here tonight. Lord, we pray that you be with uh, Mr. Rat's brother, Lord, and the things that's going on with him. Be with this young girl that's got diabetes, that's a diabetic. We pray that you be with the Sharper family and their loss. And Lord, just pray that you be with Christian and him being in the accident and helping him to recover. And Lord, we just pray that you be with Michelle and her cancer. And Lord, that family, the Stetsky family, is in need of our prayers. They're going through so much, and we just pray that you would, you would uh, strengthen them and just hold them up to you. We just pray that you'd be with us tonight, the things that we're looking at in your word. We just pray that they would touch our hearts. We'd understand the things you would. Be with us the rest of this week. Keep us safe, and uh, Lord, be with all those in uh, need of our prayers once again. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. 17 of Genesis. Oh, faithful Abraham. Abraham. You know the things that the things that went on and what God done through Abraham was because of his faithfulness. It wasn't no other no other reason for it, but just because he was faithful. And uh, who was he faithful to? He was faithful to God. And uh, uh, in his life, we know that he had some times that he slipped a little bit. And, but the things that, that he slipped in, he fixed and went on with his life and and uh, kept growing with the Lord until he until he left this world. And that's what a Christian is supposed to do. We're supposed to grow from the time we accept Christ until we leave this world. We're supposed to be uh, uh, learning and, and doing what God called us to do and and uh, learning from our experiences, learning from our failures, learning from our, our good days, and learning from our bad days. I know that's hard to say sometimes. Sometimes you just don't see past those things. But Abraham saw past them, and God blessed him in a, in a wonderful way. I think about, you know, he had two kids, and we skipped one of them a little bit in the scriptures. I don't know if we're going to get into them in our Sunday school lesson or not, but he had, he had a son with an Egyptian uh, woman that was, because God had promised him a kid, and his wife was too old and felt like she was too old to have a baby and and uh he knew that he was to to uh to inherit and he needed a, he needed a, a child to inherit those things that god had promised and uh, uh i i don't know this for a fact i've heard this and this is maybe just hearsay i i don't know because i've not dug into those things but there's other religions that think that ishmael was the chosen child rather than isaac and we can see that, that must probably a possibility I think about all the different cultures that are over there in that world you think they're all over we think about one group of people and the, the Jews and everybody else but everybody else is not just one lineage there's a bunch of lineages of a, a bunch of different uh, groups of people over there and uh, one of them started through the lineage of Ishmael and uh, they uh, the Muslims see him as being that chosen one like we see Isaac as being the chosen one so we can understand some of their thought in that process alright <clears throat> verse 1 says and when Abram was 90 years old and 9 so he's 99 and the, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him I am, I am the almighty God I am the almighty God Walk before me and be thou perfect. Well, we're supposed to do the same thing. We're supposed to walk before the Lord and be perfect in our life. And not that we are perfect, but to try to be as perfect as we can in our, our lives. But that don't, I know that don't always happen. And there's a lot of things that get thrown our way and uh, take our mind off the Lord. And um, when we get back in that relationship with him, and it's, it's, always, it's always a beautiful thing when we can get back in the relationship we had with him in the past and, and uh, get our life back on track with him. All right. And I will make my covenant uh, between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. He was going He was going to do this. He says uh, he was going to make a covenant with him. It was between him and Abraham and he was going to multiply him us exceedingly. But how many kids did he have? 
Yeah, and Ishmael, and that was it. He didn't have he didn't have he didn't have Isaac yet. So Ishmael was the only kid he had, and he was him ninety nine years old. How many more kids was he going to have? We we understand that he didn't have any more than Ishmael and Isaac, but the lineage of Abraham is uh, is where all the Jewish people came from, from Abraham down. So he might not have it might not have been in one generation, you know, or two generations or three generations. It was in a, in a, a multiple multiple generations. There, everybody that can, can claim to be Jewish today came from the seed of Abraham, and. Uh, uh, I make the point of this that he says walk before me and be thou perfect walk before me and be thou perfect and if you've done that I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly how does God how does God bless us by us walking that straight and narrow path okay and Abraham fell on his face and God talked to him saying as for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And he was making a covenant between him and God. It wasn't nobody else around there. It wasn't, he wasn't talking to Sarah. He wasn't talking to, to, to Lot. He wasn't talking. He was talking directly to Abraham or Abram at the time. And when we're saved, it's, it doesn't have nothing to do with nobody else. And nobody else in that picture is you and God. It's you and the Lord. It's nobody else. The relationship you have is between you and God. And I ain't saying that we're not all Christians and we're not all connected in that way. And, and uh, uh, anybody that believes is, is connected. But that relationship that you have is a, is a personal relationship that you have to have with the Lord. You, you, can't, you can't go through somebody else. You can't pass somebody else. You can't. It's got to be between you and God. Okay? All right. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And this word is name changed. And neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nation, nations have I made thee. And I remember Abraham and what it means because of Daniel's name being Abraham. But Abraham means to be a father of many, you know. It's, it's not just a father of a few, but a father of many. And, and you look back and um, mention it again, how many kids did he have? <laughs> how could he be a father of many with just having two? Because he was, he was the one that was called out to be a separate people and, and not just uh, applied to him, it applied to every generation beyond there. God was talking to him, not just to him specific. He was, he was concerned with generations and generations and generations. And uh, a lot of times we think about our kids and our grandkids, but what about our great grand grandkids and our great great grandkids and our great 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 grandkids? If we if we consider them, uh, no one I think about the world they have to live in. What we do now will shape at least some of that in the next generation, and the next generation is going to shape that in the next generation. So, and what Abraham was to do was was to to. Uh, Keep those family members faithful to the Lord and keep them in that right relationship with the Lord. And we're going to see some more of that when we get on down. All right. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make uh, nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And we know there did there is kings that come out of. We we, we see all all the, the Jewish kings came out of out of the lineage of Abraham, but there's one important king that come out of his lineage. That's more important than all the rest of them, and that's our Lord and Savior. He came. He's he is a king, a priest. He, he's he's a prophet. He's a preacher. Just he's everything, and uh, uh, it come out of the lineage of Abraham. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So it wasn't just. That covenant wasn't just to Abraham. He was making the covenant with Abraham for multiple generations. And what it amounts to is every generation, as long as there's a Jew on this earth, and God God has promised. And uh, I would I, I think about it. I wish I had a map of Asia Minor and, and the outskirts. So we could look and see Nineveh and see uh, 
uh, Joppa and see uh, Spain and uh, Ur and those things on a map where we could tell where, where all this stuff was at. So we could understand what what Abraham left, or Abram left, how far he had to travel, not knowing where he was going, uh, um, from a people that he that he that he knew to a people he didn't know, and and to start a family in, in a place that he hadn't had never been, and uh, because God says, hey, I got a place I want you to go, and I want you to pack your stuff and take off, and Abraham packed his stuff and took off, and that that was if he had not have done that, then. I'm, I know that God can find somebody else, but God knew that Abraham was going to be loyal to him and be faithful to him in his walk before Abraham was ever born. So we know that God knows everything that we're going to do in our life. He's not going to make us accept him. He's not going to make us uh, uh, like robots where we just listen. He wants us to come to him in love and, and uh, respect rather than him make us do that. He could have just made us all follow, follow him and do what he wanted us to do, and that was it. And God's capable of done that. He made us, and he could have done that. But God, God is the one thing God wants from us is our love to him. He loves us. There's, we ain't got to worry about that. God loves us. What God wants us to do is love him back. So that relationship between Abraham and God was a loving relationship. Okay? Verse 8 says, I will give give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of the Canaan of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. I will be their God. And uh, we we have a record. This is God signing a deed over to a place. No, no other group of people and the world has got anything like that. We got biblical record that God gave that place to them. So the deed was given to them by God. They're not there. They, they're they're in a lost spot on the map compared to what God gave them. But when we read on into the scripture and get into Revelation we understand that God's going to give it back to them. That thousand year millennial reign, they're going to have everything that God had promised Abraham uh, back in these scriptures, the Jews are going to have back. So if we was looking at that map, we could see what a what a speck on a map that Jerusalem is compared to what God gave them. And God's God's word is true today. It's true true in the past. It's going to be true in the future. He says it's going to happen. So it's going to happen. And what's what's got to happen for them to have that land? I would be. I might be mad at the. Jews too if I knew that where I was living belonged to them and they wanted it back, right? <laughs> that God was going to give it back to them. There you go. You got a map? Is that in, where is that at? Yeah, we need it about this big though. So we put it on the wall. I need a giant map. That's exactly what I was thinking yeah. about. Yeah, well, I'd love Looking to into getting one to go on the wall. Yeah, put on that wall over there. Yeah, just look. Yeah. From from there to there, and part of the opposite side of the uh, Sea of Galilee, they, the, some of us, two of the groups, uh, the twelve, stayed outside the borders there. But still, that's a major piece of property. Mm -hmm. Major. I mean, we're we're and they and they're living in a city that's not much bigger, probably a place that's not much bigger than Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. They're going to get it all back because God promised it to them here. All right. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, uh, therefore therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. He's, he's saying, he's saying that not, not just, this ain't just for you. I'm making the covenant with you, but it's for all generations after thee. We, we are blessed through Abraham. We're blessed through Abraham. We're blessed through Abraham because we got a Lord and Savior to come through the lineage of Abraham. We got we we're blessed through Abraham because we're adopted into the same faith that Abraham had in God and that covenant that he had there uh, uh, that God made with Abraham. We we have an inheritance waiting on us that we can't even imagine. It's, there there's no way we can even even 
faintly imagine what God's got waiting on us. Through promise. Hey, I'd rather believe in God's promise than I would in what some person's promise. God's promise is true. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my uh, covenant, therefore, therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. This, uh, uh, I'm glad we're, we're here tonight to talk about this. <laughs> it, I think Paul and Timothy, I'd have to go back in the scripture and look. Timothy's mama was a Jew, but his daddy was a Greek or a, a Roman. And they didn't have bathtubs that they just had in their house and they took a bath by themselves and that was the end of it. They had places for the women to take bath and they had places for the men to take bath. And you might go down there to bath, there might be 10 people there, they might be you by yourself. But either way, it wasn't something that in our culture we'd understand unless we knew that. They went to a, a pool where they took a bath. And only Jews were allowed to be in the pool. You know? And, and if you were not, didn't look like a Jew, then they were mad. And Timothy, uh, at some point, there was a little stink over the fact that he was not uh, circumcised. And uh, that's when Paul wrote a whole bunch about circumcision of, of, the, of the, the body. It's not what God wants you to do. He wants you to circumcise your heart. And all those things he wrote was because of that, those situations. They thought because they were circumcised and they were God's people and nobody else that wasn't circumcised was anything to do with God. They were ungodly. They were they didn't have no no right to anything that was uh, uh, of that true and living uh, God that they worshipped. It was just them. And that that one little old thing was going to keep them from being saved or going to heaven or being, or, or being able to go into the synagogues or anything that had to do with their culture. That one thing. And uh, God does tell them to do it though. So all right. We don't live we don't live in the Old Testament laws. So <laughs> okay. This is I will not want to read it again. I'm gonna read eleven. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a uh, token of the covenant between betwixt me and you. And he, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man, child, in your generation, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in, the, in thy house and he that is born with thy fault, excuse me, with thy money, must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your uh, flesh or an everlasting covenant. We uh, uh, no matter what we do in the body makes any difference. It's what we do in our minds and our hearts when it comes to when it comes to our relationship with our Lord. The uh, this was something that Jews done, and I know that they. And I've read about it, and it says that some other other cultures did too. I don't know what cultures they are. I know that this was something God gave Abraham and told him to do so. I'd like to point out the fact that he didn't say just y'all that's born of your genetics and that's it. He didn't say just the, the lineage of Abraham. He says everybody that's in your house, everybody that's in your in your workforce, ever you know those, those that was working those cattle catalysts and, and that Abraham owned, they had to be circumcised too. Can you imagine going to a job and them saying, okay, we'll hire you, Del. <laughs> <laughs> And you not being circumcised, but you gotta, whew, that'd be, I don't know if I could, I'd probably not take the job. <laughs> but either way, all right. But my point was, and I've said this before, cultures that stay true to their culture don't grow and expand in their knowledge as quick. The reason Nebuchadnezzar took kids from a different culture and put in his culture and, and told them to be taught in his ways and was because it helped them to to 
learn things that they wouldn't have known without those kids. And the uh, United States has been a pot of, a pot of soup of all kind of cultures for so many years. There's a reason they've done so well in the things that we, you know, technology. Technology come from those things. And, that, and I, I think I've already mentioned it, but the fact that there's big companies don't want to hire everybody from Lacucci. They don't want to hire everybody from Dade City and people that's been there their whole life. They don't want to hire everybody from Alabama or Tennessee. They want to hire people from Europe. They want to hire people from Asia. They want to hire people from, from Australia. They want to hire people from all the continents of this world and mix them all together because they get better ideas through those different cultures to expand their businesses and make more money. But the bad thing is, the cultures that have done that, they eventually fall because of the different cultures coming in. And uh, Christianity is, is one of the things that's been at that uh, chopping block for them for so many years. And closer and closer are they trying, trying to stop people from even worshiping our Lord and Savior. And are worshiping God, the God that we know to be. It's because the cultures from other places don't believe. And uh, they, they believe in a different way. And, and they use those things against the, uh, the ones that actually wrote the Constitution and all those other things. And I'll get on, I'll get into all that, but still, the, the hodgepodge of people end up causing, that they grow really quick, but they end up causing them to come apart because of that. Cultures that stay true to their culture, they, they last through time for just any way. I'd have to, I can show y'all stuff that you can prove that point. But anyway, we uh, every time the Jews bring anybody else in, you know, said, hey, we just, we just, we make a covenant with y'all. Y'all can live here and we'll live here and we just all be hunky dory friends. And, and uh, all of a sudden, what happens is they turn against them or they uh, take over them. Or, and God says, hey, I told y'all to run them off and you didn't run them off, so I'm going to let you fall in their hands and they can drag y'all away to, to Babylon and drag you away to, to uh, uh, Egypt and drag you away to those places because I told you you don't have nothing to do with them and you did. So my point is the, the, the technology we got is because of so many different cultures but the fact that we bring all these different cultures in and I'm not trying to be show, think I'm prejudiced in any way is really what makes a society break apart too. Okay. All right. Where was I at? Um, All right. I think I'm at 12, 15. 13. All right. 13. No more than 14. And the uh, uncircumcised man child and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. This uh, uh, the covenant between him and the Jews, him and Abraham, and uh, like I say, we don't live under those those same rules because we live in we're living under grace rather than the law. And uh, uh, the, I assume doctors know that it's probably the most helpful thing to do because they want to do it to all all children now. And I don't know where I got this from. So y'all can take it with a grain of salt. The uh, I think I might have heard it on a. Uh, Christian radio station that scientists have just figured out recently in the last few years that that eighth day that eighth day that God said to circumcise that young man, the eighth day is the best day to circumcise a, a newborn child <laughs> it's something to do with the antibodies or whatever the mother gives them uh, their colostrum so that they can fight off infection and that kind of thing better on eighth day but I don't know that to be true but like I say I heard it somewhere it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me one bit that science figures that out and says you know what we need to circumcise young on eighth day because that's the best time because everything works out better on the eighth day and go back in the scripture and say you know what the earth's round and the bible said it was round 4,000 years ago <laughs> you know what I'm saying all right and Abraham fell upon, upon his face. Did I skip a verse? All right, let me read 16. And I will, and I will bless her. I did skip one. Let's get another one. 
I'm going back up there. Back up one. I'll back up two. And God said unto Abram, Abraham, as for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her uh, name Sarah, but uh, Sarah shall her name be Sarah and Sarah. Do we know the differences in the names? There's not much. It's kind of, one of them's like princess and the other one's princess. But one of them is like a Nicola. Sarah means the root, uh, to contend, and Sarah as meaning the princess. Yeah. This, uh, it puts her on a higher level. Can you imagine? God says, your name, your name don't, don't reflect what I think of you. You're, you're going to be the mother of many nations. Not just Abraham being the father of many nations. You need a better title than the one you got. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you a princess. Can you, that's, that's, that's great that God would call Sarah a princess. Change her name from Sarah to Sarah. She's a princess. All right. And how, if, if, if you're a king and you're a queen and you have a kid, the lineage of your kid puts them on a, on a stature higher than somebody that's not a king or a queen. And uh, uh, God, God was gonna, going to have kings and queens out of, out of Abraham's lineage, and they needed the right titles to say so. All right. <clears throat> then Abraham fell, fell upon his face. Did I skip that on again? No. Yeah, yeah. Genesis 16. Somebody, my, my, somebody, must, somebody else might need to read that because I keep skipping that. And I will bless her and give thee, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, kings of peoples. People shall be of her. All right, <clears throat> and that's the reason for her name change. And it tells you in the next verse, and I just skip it twice. And <laughs> okay. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is? hundred years old and shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear well we know that there was there was people in the Old Testament that lived a whole lot longer before the flood than than we can even imagine 900 plus years 800 600 but uh, and, and after the flood most people didn't live to be very many hundreds of years old and where where our, our last man has promised <clears throat> us it's not, it's not a promise that we're going to live that long, but a man that claims to be, the Bible says that a man's life, if we live beyond like 75 years old, we're on borrowed time. Isn't that pretty clear? So you're blessed if you're 76. You're blessed beyond, beyond your 77. All right. <clears throat> when Abraham said, Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And uh, I don't know that Ishmael was living before him at that, that time. If he's saying, hey, I, can, can Ishmael be that child? Or was he saying that Ishmael needed to be uh, 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 a better follower of the Lord? I don't think that's what the case was. I think that Abraham didn't think he was ever going to be able to have any kids. And Sarah wasn't going to be able to have any kids. So uh, would God make that covenant with him? And his seed, the Ishmael, would be the seed that he had that covenant with. All right. And God says, Sarah, Sarah thy wife, shall bear thee a son. Indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will, will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Isaac. Not, not Ishmael, but Isaac. And we, we, uh, uh, we know right not far from here. God said, take Isaac, put him on altar, sacrifice him before me. And uh, Abraham took Isaac, put him on an altar, and was going to kill him when God, God sent an angel to stay his hand. And I know that's a reflection of what our Lord was going to do, but the fact that Abraham was that, was that faithful to God's word, knowing that he had a covenant with God, that God said he was going to have children, and, and they were going to have children for many generations. They was going to have that covenant because Abraham knew that he was coming back with that child, even if he had sacrificed him. Anybody here got that kind of faith? To know that you could put your young on an altar, 
The sacrifice was to be separated. Cut him up. Put him on a burnt offering and expect you to walk back down in mountain mountain with him. That's out of faith. That's good. That's that's faith beyond faith in my 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 life. I don't know that I can God would have to strengthen you. He would. Alright. And Abraham said, okay. What was his name, Isaac? And as, as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Uh, twelve princes shall he uh, be got to get, and I will make him a great nation. And so they have been. Oil has made them people beyond rich. I don't know where the I don't know where these princes princes are. We could probably look in historical records and find them. And uh, uh, God blessed him because he was Abraham's son. But the covenant was not made with Ishmael; it was made with Isaac. Okay. I'm not going to go much further. But my covenant will will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this at this set time in the next year. So can you imagine? God's saying, you're, you're, you're 100 years old, Sarah's 90, she's going to have a kid at 101 years old, exactly this time next year, at this exact time, you're going to have a young one. And it's going to be a boy, and you're going to name him Isaac. That's, uh, I, don't, I don't have no thought that God's not capable of doing that. It's just, God's capable, capable of doing, uh, telling us our, our future, our, our, and he knows our past, and our presence so all right and he uh, left off taking with him what? and he left off talking with him and God went up from Abraham I'm gonna stop there and so he, he just ended the conversation and uh, If we could all walk, and I've heard this my whole life, faithful Abraham. If we could all walk like Abraham before the Lord, the blessings that he would bestow on us are beyond our comprehension. And we, uh, it may not be riches, it may not be fame or none of the things that people seem to want in, in this world, but the blessings that he would bestow on you that uh, uh, we can't even imagine. It's, uh, there's a lot of blessings we don't get because we're not walking that straight and narrow. There's a lot of blessings that uh, we'll never see because of those things. So, I'm going to pray in this mess. Father God, we thank you for this uh, beautiful night, Lord. We thank you for those that are here. We pray that you be with those that are, were mentioned here earlier on our, uh, for uh, special prayers, Lord. But we ask uh, uh, you be with all those on our prayer list, especially those that are lost. We pray that we might say something or do something that they would understand that they're in need of a Savior. Lord, and it would come to you before it's everlasting too late. We pray that you be with us the rest of this week. And Lord, let us reflect you in the things that we do. Be with our government and things that are going on, Lord. We pray that your, your will will be done in those things. And pray that they would, uh, uh, this virus and the things that they're doing uh, to control it, Lord. And we just pray that, that you'd uh, help us through it. And Lord, uh, get us through to the other side. And we just thank you for it. Keep us safe on the highways and be with all those that are not here tonight whatever reason to keep them safe until they return and just thank you for it in Jesus name Amen